February 25, 2008 said farewell to Father of Christian Rock. His last words might surprise you. Larry Norman's 1969 solo album Upon This Rock is considered to be the first Christian rock record, and his release in 1972 Only Visiting This Planet is thought to be one of the best albums in the genre. That album was actually chosen by the United States Library of Congress in 2014 as an American cultural treasure. In Corpus Christi, Texas, on April 8, 1947, Norman was born. He moved to San Francisco, California, with his family when he was three years old, and in the middle of the 1950s, he developed an obsession with Elvis Presley's music. He also regularly went with his father on mission trips to hospitals and jails around that time. Larry started penning and singing his own rock and roll songs at school when he was nine years old. He experimented and added a spiritual theme to his song. He made an appearance on Ted Mack's CBS syndicated program The Original Amateur Hour in 1959. After relocating to San Jose, California, he started recording music for Capitol Records in 1966 with his group People. He went on to support bands including The Doors, The Who, Janis Joplin, and Jimi Hendrix, and others. People scored a Billboard chart hit in 1968 with a cover of the Zombies song, I Love You. Norman left the band the day People's debut album was released. His own solo albums recorded in the 1970s on his independent label Solid Rock which he owned himself and the albums of other artists he discovered and produced was what would eventually become the Christian rock music industry. The beliefs he voiced caused a lot of stir among Christians and non-Christians alike. His opinions and beliefs against racism and poverty got him quite a few death threats in the 1970s and a widespread ban on his music which is largely still ongoing to this day in Christian stores. Norman was quoted as saying, The churches weren't going to accept me looking like a street person with long hair and faded jeans. They did not like the music I was recording, and I had no desire to preach the gospel to the converted. Time magazine once called Norman, the most significant artist in his field. Over 300 cover versions of his songs have been recorded by artists such as Petula Clark, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Black, and Cliff Richard. His songs have been recorded by contemporary Christian artists such as DC Talk, Rebecca St. James, and Audio Adrenaline. He performed for the White House, twice, also performed in Moscow at the 80,000-seat Olympic Stadium. He headlined venues including the Hollywood Bowl, the Sydney Opera House, the Palladium and London's prestigious Royal Albert Hall, which he sold out six times once filling it twice on the same day. In 2001, Norman was inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame alongside Elvis Presley. At the time of his death, he was working on a concept album with Frank Black and Isaac Brock of Modest Mouse. In a message he wrote on Saturday, February 23rd, a day before he passed away, Norman said, I feel like a prize in a box of Cracker Jacks with God's hand reaching down to pick me up. I have been under medical care for months. My wounds are getting bigger. I have trouble breathing. I am ready to fly home. I won't be here much longer. I can't do anything about it. My heart is too weak. I want to say goodbye to everyone. In the past, you have generously supported me with prayer and finance, and we will probably still need financial help. My plan is to be buried in a simple pine box with some flowers inside. I'd like to push back the darkness with my bravest effort. There will be funeral information posted on my website, in case some of you want to attend. We are not sure of the date when I will die. Goodbye. Farewell. We will meet again.